Hello and welcome to John's Client Tax School. I'm John Lucadellis and uh, today's presentation is about estate freezes. Estate freezes are a tool commonly used by tax practitioners to uh, postpone tax that would otherwise be payable on the death of an individual. The idea being to uh, postpone tax and thereby save tax and so ensure that more of the individual's assets end up in the hands of his or her heirs rather than in the hands of the CRA. Let's begin with a bit of a disclaimer. This is a presentation that is uh, relevant only for Canadians. It's about Canadian income tax law and not the law of any other jurisdiction. The presentation is for educational purposes only and not for uh, the pur purposes of providing legal advice. It's really important that if you want to implement a freeze or any other kind of tax-driven reorganization for that matter that you consult with your own tax advisor. Okay, well why freeze? Typically we have one or two different objectives when we are looking at uh, doing a freeze. The uh, first purpose of a freeze is usually to uh, postpone tax on a portion of the growth and the value of the assets or business owned by a person. And the idea is that if we can postpone tax, we can save tax. That's a, a time value of money principle. If you have a choice between paying a dollar of tax today and paying that same dollar 10 years from now, obviously you're going to uh, choose to pay it 10 years from now. And so we're trying to postpone tax by doing an estate freeze. We're trying to postpone tax by 10 or 20 or you know as many years as we can in order to uh, save that tax. Um, estate freezes are also a, a good method for allowing um, family members to become shareholders of a corporation or to allowing key employees to become shareholders of a corporation in a tax effective manner so that um, you don't fall afoul of the uh, attribution rules or you know if you simply made a gift of shares to a person that can trigger tax in your hands and so an estate freeze uh, can be a good way to allow a person in as a shareholder of a corporation without incurring those tax costs. All right, so a little bit of background. Uh, we don't have estate taxes in Canada, but under Canadian income tax law, a, a deceased person is treated as selling all of his or her capital property for proceeds equal to its fair market value at death. And if the fair market value, if those deemed proceeds equal to that fair market value are greater than the tax cost of the asset, then 50% of the excess, which we call a capital gain, is included in the person's income. And for these purposes, capital property usually, uh, almost always in fact, uh, includes shares in a private corporation. So over here on the left we have a bar representing the value of assets. Uh, the green portion is the tax cost of the assets, and the red portion is the excess of the fair market value of the asset over the tax cost, and it's this red portion that gives rise to a potential tax liability. It's that one half of that portion that's in excess of tax cost that must be included in income for Canadian tax purposes. So that in Ontario, if you die owning a share, let's say, that has a value of $1,000 and We'll, like, we'll say it just has no tax cost for the sake of simplicity. In Ontario, if you're otherwise taxable at the top marginal rate, you'll likely pay about $230 of tax in respect of that share, or your estate will pay $230 of tax in respect of that share. So what if your shares today were worth a um, million dollars and you had decided that uh, that these shares represented enough money along with your other assets represented enough money for you to retire uh, or live comfortably for the rest of your life. So you have these shares worth a million dollars you've decided that that's enough and that's not always an easy decision to make it's not a tax driven decision either. Uh, first and foremost you have to think about your own well-being during the rest of your life but let's say you have decided that the, the million is enough. Well any additional gain on those shares is just going to create tax that you don't need to incur because you don't need that growth. If the shares increase in value it's not helping you at all you don't need it but it is creating a bigger tax bill for you. So what can we do about that? Well what if instead of having that growth accrue in your hands you can give it away to your kids so you can give that future growth away to your children and the idea is that the children because they will 
uh, likely live long uh, after you've passed away, or for some time after you've passed away anyway, uh, they'll pay tax on that growth too, but they'll pay tax on it um, much further into the future than you would if you kept that growth. So by giving the growth away to your children, you've deferred tax on the growth, and as a result, you've saved tax. So the idea might be to give away this red portion, that's the the growth in excess of what you really need. You only really need the green portion here. Let's give away that red portion to the next generation so that they pay tax on it um, well uh, well into the future compared to when you would pay tax on it. All right, so so much for theory. Let's talk a little bit about how to do a freeze. What are, what are the freeze mechanics? Well, to understand that, we need to understand a little bit about the difference between common shares and special shares, or as special shares are sometimes called preferred shares or preference shares, really no uh, significant difference in the name um, as far as what the shares actually are. Well, common shares are generally entitled to the assets of a corporation after the claims of creditors and special shareholders have been satisfied. And so as a result, common shares generally increase in value as the assets of a corporation increase in value. Common shares are entitled to whatever is left over after all other uh, you know, securities holders have been satisfied. So because they're entitled to the residue, the value of common shares goes up when the assets of a corporation uh, increase. Uh, special shares, on the other hand, they usually are entitled to the assets of a corporation on liquidation before common shares. They have a kind of a, well, they have a preference in effect. Uh, but in return, they have, they usually have a fixed redemption amount. That's like the principal amount of a debt. You know that a principal, the principal of a note is a hundred dollars. Um, that doesn't change as time goes on, regardless of the financial fortunes of uh, the issuer of the note, unless unless the issuer becomes insolvent. But the issuer, you know, issues a note or special shares that have a fixed redemption amount for, let's say, $100 in either case. If the assets of the corporation double in value after the issue of the note or after the issue of the special shares, that doesn't change the amount that needs to be repaid to the special shareholder or to the note holder. That value is fixed. And so, uh, special shares don't generally do not increase in value as the value of a corporation's assets increases. And these bars are meant to represent that over here on the left. The bar represents the value of all the assets of the corporation and the different colored portions, the claims that securities holders have on those assets so that the uh, debt holders are entitled to the portion, uh, the value that's represented by this red bar here special shareholders are entitled to the blue and the common shareholders are entitled to the yellow portion. If 10 years from now the value of the corporation goes up, if its assets increase in value, and let's say we haven't repaid any of the debt, we haven't sold or redeemed any of the special shares, then their value stays the same. The red bar and the blue bar stay the same, but the common shares of course have increased in value because the corporation has increased in value and so the yellow bar is now bigger as we can see over here on the right. So this allows us to understand how an estate freeze works. Let's say we have the um, corporation starting today and the value of its assets are represented by the bar on the left over here. We've got the red portion again representing debt and uh, there's, let's say there are no special shares, just common shares and that's represented by this yellow portion. Well, let's look at the difference between doing a freeze and not doing a freeze uh, 15 years from now if the corporation significantly increases in value. If we haven't done a freeze, then we'll say that the debt doesn't change over the 15-year period, and so the red rectangle hasn't changed at all in, in terms of its size. It's the same. The common shares that we originally held, if we don't do a freeze, well, we still have, of course, we still have the original value, but on top of that, we have this additional large yellow rectangle to represent the growth in the value of the corporation over that 15-year period. So that if um, the person who originally held the shares, the common shares of the corporation, hasn't done a freeze and then dies 15 years from now, the value in respect of which we need to pay tax or in respect of which that person's estate needs to pay tax, that's represented by these two uh, bars, the two yellow bars here. Whereas if we did a freeze, what happens? Well, we convert 
on a tax deferred basis the common shares into special shares so the rectangles are the same so we we note that the value hasn't changed here at all we're not making that value disappear we're not making that tax bill disappear instead though what we've done is we've ensured that the that value in the hands of the original common shareholders doesn't increase of course but the special shares haven't increased in value over that 15 year period the size of the rectangles is still the same but what we've done is we have put the uh, growth into the hands of the next generation let's say we've issued new common shares and put it in the hands of the children of the original common shareholders so all of that increase in value represented by this yellow bar in the top right here that accrues in the hands of the children and if something were to happen to the special shareholders at the end of the 15 year period we'll still pay tax in respect of that blue rectangle but all of the tax that would have been payable in respect of that yellow rectangle we've deferred that that won't uh, trigger a tax liability in the event of a death at the end of that 15 year period so we convert common shares to special shares on a tax-free basis so we start with the yellow rectangle we convert that yellow rectangle to a blue rectangle same size same amount of value there but um, now that blue rectangle is going to be fixed in size as the value of the assets of the corporation increase and we have the next generation subscribe for new common shares represented by this little yellow rectangle for a relatively small amount of money why because if we do a freeze all of the value of the corporation is in effect converted to fixed value securities um, the debt that's still there the, the blue rectangle the special shares it should be possible to come along and subscribe for common shares for a relatively small amount of money and that's what this little yellow rectangle is meant to represent okay let's do a quick example let's say that we have Ms. X and she's 69 years old and she owns all of the shares in the capital of Holdco and uh, her common shares are worth a million dollars and they have a tax cost of only a hundred dollars she decides to do a freeze in favor of her 36 year old son so she converts her common shares to 10,000 special shares with a fair market value of a million so again we haven't made that value disappear we haven't made the accrued but unrealized gain disappear but we've converted the common shares to fixed value special shares for uh, on a tax deferred basis we don't trigger any tax at the time that we do the freeze of course and the son then comes along and subscribes for a hundred common shares for a hundred dollars and his shares have a fair market value of a hundred dollars and a tax cost of a hundred dollars unfortunately Ms. X passes away 15 years later um, at the age of 84 her special share is still worth a million still have an accrued gain of essentially of a million dollars we haven't made that tax bill disappear but look what's happened over the 15 year period now Holdco has increased in value. The total value of Holdco has increased to $1.6 million. But that $600,000 in growth over the 15 year period has accrued in the hands of Ms. X's son, who's only 51 at the time of her demise. So he might live another 30 years owning those shares. And if he does, then he won't, the tax won't have to be paid in respect of that $600,000 gain until he passes away, which is we're saying is 30 years after the death of Ms. X we've postponed tax on that six hundred thousand dollars in growth by 30 years compared to the position we would have been in if Ms. X hadn't done the estate freeze she had continued to own all of the shares of Holdco and had died owning shares of Holdco worth 1.6 million dollars so we've uh, uh, postponed tax by quite a bit and as a result we've uh, saved a lot of tax so that's the estate freeze concept the uh, technique we use to allow the children of shareholders to become uh, participants in the growth and the value of a corporation for a relatively small amount of money and um, also the means we use for postponing tax so that more of a taxpayers money can end up in the hands of uh, his or her heirs rather than in the hands of the uh, CRA